I think I will start now. Um, so thanks to all for chaining in. Um, my name is Matthias Roth, and today um, I want to talk about our work coupling microscopic mobility and mobile network emulation for pedestrian communication applications. Um, if you have um, any questions, um, you can ask them at any time. And I think we um, will also have a lot of room um, for discussion after the uh, main presentation. Okay, the title is Coupling Microscopic Mobility and Mobile Network Emulation for Pedestrian Communication Applications. And um, this coupling was achieved by using a combination of the um, already existing Cronet framework and a newly developed network emulation extension um, for this framework. Um, the outline, I will start by um, telling a bit about the Cronet framework, then I will introduce the um, emulation extension, I will go into its technical architecture, I will present some performance measurements um, that we performed on this extension, um, then I have a little um, pre-recorded live demo where you can see the framework with the extension in action. And yeah, then the conclusion and following hopefully a, a nice discussion. Okay, I start by um, telling a bit about the Crownet framework. Um, Crownet stands for Crowd Network. Um, it's a um, framework that's developed um, here at Hochschule München. Um, and it combines pedestrian locomotion simulation with um, wireless communication simulation. Um, that means it's a framework for evaluating and um, researching pedestrian communication, basically. Um, the framework uh, consists of the uh, Vardere simulator, which is a simulation tool for microscopic um, pedestrian mobility simulation. And the um, network and communication simulation part is uh, written in Omnit++, um, and it uses the INET, um, SimuLTE, Artery, and RAINS frameworks. Um, Crownet, um, in the world of Crownet, um, pedestrians are called nodes, and they exchange their position information as so-called um, position beacons. The framework itself is open source. Um, you can find it uh, here on GitHub. OK. Um, now we wanted to couple um, mobile applications to Crownet um, for some scenarios. So our goal was to develop a network emulation extension for the Crownet framework. Um, the, that means um, that we want to exchange position beacons and mobility data between uh, the simulation and real devices. We developed this uh, mainly with um, mobile Android applications in mind, um, but of course you can use it for um, like any other application as well. Our main motivation were um, to test mobile applications in pedestrian communication scenarios um, without the need of actually having um, a lot of testers around, um, which was especially useful during the COVID situation, but it's uh, in general a great tool um, to simplify testing. Um, it also allows to demonstrate either the application or um, the simulation to interested people. And it also allows um, user studies um, of the um, coupled application. Okay, now I will talk a bit about the um, technical architecture um, of the extension. Um, it basically consists of three um, Omni++ modules. Um, the first one is the outbound emulation module. Um, this one receives um, position beacons from uh, nodes inside the simulation and forwards them to the coupled device. Um, and this is basically to make um, the data or the position of nodes available to the um, coupled application. Then we have the node location exporter, um, which sends the position of one node to one coupled device. And it's used um, to simulate a movement of the coupled device itself um, without the need of actually um, moving the device. And it's, uh, yeah, it's basically for spoofing the device's location. And then we have the inbound emulation module, um, which uh, just works the other way around. It receives um, position beacons from coupled devices and forwards them to emulated nodes. So yeah, that's useful if you have a scenario where you want to use a combination of simulated and real devices. 
the communication with the couple devices um, uses a standard IP slash UDP network stack. Um, we use uh, Omnet plus or INET's emulation features, um, specifically the Explorer UDP module, um, to actually receive and send those UDP packets um, to the real network. And um, for data serialization, we use protocol buffers um, just because of its small size footprints. And um, of course, we also have to do a translation between the position of nodes inside the simulation and the um, location of the real world scenario. Um, the, simula um, the emulation itself happens in the application layer of um, one crowned node um, at the uh, momently. Um, in general, we would just use the first node, so node with index zero, um, which then serves as the um, emulation bridge. Here you see a, a um, comparison between a generic crowned node on the left side. It consists of an LTE network interface, and there are also variants that use Wi-Fi, um, an IP slash UDP network stack, and then in the application layer, we have um, one application um, which is responsible for beacon dissemination. And then, yeah, here in this example, we have also a density map app. Um, this one calculates density maps from received beacons and also send those density maps around. But um, this could depend on the actual um, test that we are performing. On the right hand side, you see the node zero. So the first node, which in this case serves as the emulation bridge. Um, the um, bottom layers are the same, but in the application layer, you see um, we have the beacon app and the density map app uh, removed because um, those tasks should then be handled uh, by the coupled device itself. And here we use a combination of the outbound emulation and the node location exporter, um, both with their own um, XLOA UDP interface. And yeah, that's a fairly common um, combination that we use for a lot of stuff. Um, here you see a comparison between the node location exporter and the inbound emulation module. Um, in uh, because of the, with the mobility flow between the nodes, you see if the uh, node location exporter is used, um, the BADA, the mobility simulator, provides mobility information to all nodes, including node zero. And node zero, so the emulation bridge node, forwards um, this mobility information to the coupled application. If the inbound emulation module is used, um, node zero doesn't take any mobility information um, from BADA anymore. Um, instead, it receives its mobility information directly from the carpet application. Okay, um, now the um, performance measurements that we performed. Um, for our specific use case, it's um, really important that the simulation runs in real time um, so that the um, simulation time matches the wall clock time or nearly matches the wall clock time. And this is important because um, there might be some timeout or TTL requirements on the side of the coupled application. Um, so um, it's uh, not possible, or in most cases, not possible to just let um, the simulation, for example, run in half free time. And we discovered that um, the performance drastically decreases with an increasing number of simulated nodes. Um, this measurement that you can see here was performed um, on a fairly low-end virtual machine on my computer, so um, you might get uh, better results um, if you use a better machine. And um, it showed that with um, up to six nodes, um, the simulation time um, matches the wall clock time, or it matches it again after some minor lags, but for seven or more nodes, um, the difference between uh, wall clock time and simulation time um, keeps increasing, um, which is um, uh, yeah, which is bad if you have um, timeout or TTL requirements on side of the coupled application. Okay, um, now I can show you a little um, demo where you can see the um, framework in action.
okay, um, that's a scenario that I recorded some time ago. Um, it takes place in the very center of Munich. On the left, you can see the um, crowned simulation running with all um, the pedestrian nodes. And on the right, you can see the screen of a um, coupled Android application on running on a real Android device. Um, in this scenario, um, a combination between the node location exporter and the outbound emulation is used. Um, this is why you can see um, the density map, um, which contains the data of all simulated nodes. And you can see um, this blue arrow um, that the device itself is um, simulating movement. And um, what you can see in this recording is that we have here a, a number of 30 devices, um, which is much greater than uh, the number of six nodes and um, which can run in real time. And yeah, um, this simulation didn't run in real time. So I had to um, increase um, the timeout values on the side of um, the coupled Android device um, so that um, that is not a problem and we can live with um, this very slow um, beacon rate. Okay, um, now to the conclusion. Um, the um, extension of the Chromenet framework allows network emulation for mobile apps using pedestrian communi uh, communication and is useful um, in many different scenarios, especially for testing. But the number of nodes is limited um, by the new performance requirements. So um, future work would include to find the performance bottlenecks and uh, possibly fixing them. And um, I also plan to integrate um, more data formats, um, uh, some uh, common formats like, for example, JSON, which would allow to um, use this framework for much more applications. OK, um, that's about it from the side of my presentation. Um, thank you for your attention. Um, you can find the source code of um, Crownit, um, including this, um, this emulation extension on GitHub. And yeah, now, now I'm curious um, about your comments and questions. Thank you. So does anybody have um, questions about our work or comments? Hello, Hello Matthias. Uh, Hello. I think I will try to break the ice in here. <laughs> I actually you. have uh, a lot of questions. It's very, very, your, I believe your work is very interesting. And uh, uh, it's uh, not surprisingly, but uh, I, I'm happy to see that it is crossing uh, the lines with our it's similar works we are doing uh, with SIMOLD and SIMO 5G and all the related stuff uh, uh, in bridging the simulation and emulation, uh, real data, simulated uh, uh, application, all, all together. I, it is really, really, really interesting. Uh, I have first a couple of clarification that I would like to, to get from you and then uh, several, several questions, but of course, uh, I'm just, I would like just to break the ice and then see whether there are other questions, of course. Um, so first, just to, to grasp a little bit more what you are doing here, you have uh, uh, a simulated environment which is running on uh, an emulated, uh, roughly an emulated environment, uh, which is using uh, Omnet Plus, uh, iNet and some other uh, modules all together. Uh, running in real time, so running with a real time scheduler, if I got that yes. correctly. And uh, you have, uh, at least from what I understood from your slide, one uh, node, real node, that is connected uh, directly into the emulated environment. Yes. Right? Yes. So the, the, just to use a common term that is very popular this day, you have the digital twin of your real node into the simulated environment, which was this, that node zero. Yes. Okay, so very good. But uh, my question is, uh, the first question is, are you having just the, the number of nodes uh, that you're considering for scalability, number up to 60, if I get that correctly, is the number of 
node zeros that you have in the simulation? Or is that the number of uh, okay. pu purely simulated ones? Okay, um, I will go back to the um, uh, performance measurement slide. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, thank you for your question. Um, uh, you Yes, you mentioned, of course, we use um, the real-time scheduler. We use the real-time scheduler um, from the INET framework. And we um, specifically use mm -hmm. a slightly modified version of it um, because um, if we start up our um, simulation, Vardere takes some time um, before the first mobility data arrives, um, which would mean that we start with an initial um, difference between the um, real time and the simulation time. Um, so yeah, we are using a slightly modified version of the um, real time scheduler. And um, that's the number of, um, of all nodes. So including node zero, um, which would mean um, that on this machine, we could simulate um, five nodes um, and one um, node zero, one emulation bridging node. But um, this specific measurement um, was taken on a um, very low end machine, I think only two CPU cores. And um, we also used um, LTE, SimulTE in, um, in this specific scenario, um, which also has a um, large, uh, performance overhead. So um, if we would build another scenario, maybe on a stronger machine and um, not using LTE, um, for example, using Wi-Fi, then we would also expect that it would work with um, much more nodes. Okay. Uh, it, it, would it be possible, uh, at least uh, as an idea, to have uh, more than one node zero? Is this allowed by your model or do you, do you need to do any modification on that? Um, yes, uh, that's um, there's uh, that's allowed. Um, at the moment, um, we are using it um, to couple to, and um, we can use one node zero um, to couple to more devices. Um, in this case, we just use um, broadcast messages, um, broadcast packets. But um, yeah, of course, um, you could use um, multiple node zeros. Um, each each node zero um, has an IP address and port of the couple device configured. So yeah, that would work. Okay. Okay, uh, regarding uh, your, your first comment uh, on your, uh, your response on, uh, um, we, we know that, uh, uh, that the SimulT model, by the way, I, I'm one of the developers of the, of the model uh, together with, uh, with Giovanni who is here as well. Uh, we, we are uh, really aware of the, the burden that is created by SimulTE. Uh, I don't know whether the, the fully fledged Wi-Fi model would be lighter or not. Uh, I'm not uh, in the, when using the, the, the old complex model, it might be uh, similar, mm -hmm. the performance. If I remember correctly, there was a presentation a couple of years ago showing that it was actually uh, have the fully fledged version of the Wi-Fi model was actually a little bit heavier than uh, than SimulT, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we also with the Simu 5G we did a lot of improvement in this respect. That we, I believe you can support uh, more than uh, those uh, number of nodes in real time. Uh, also, I don't think that having multiple cores would help in this case, uh, given the fact, uh, this is just a comment, given the fact you're using a single thread in the simulation. So in that case, it, I don't think it would help. Uh, just answering to this because we talked about that, so it's uh, something that we, we were considering. And another thing, and this is, I, I think it's my, my big question in here, are you using these uh, uh, just to, to mimic that? This is something that I, I really get got uh, from your presentation. Are you using these just uh, uh, to mimic the position over time of that node zero in the simulation environment, or are all, you are also transferring the real data from the real application, like communicating between the real application and the emulated ones? Um, this um, depends on the combination um, of 
of modules that you actually use. Um, so the outbound emulation module um, is very simple. It just um, sends the, B, uh, the position of all beacons that node zero um, receives to the coupled device, um, which means that the position of node zero itself matters um, because um, if node zero is uh, too fast from um, other nodes, then it uh, might not um, receive um, those information. But um, if you use, for example, the inbound emulation, um, then you can um, use a bi-directional um, emulation. That means that you can also um, receive the uh, location of the couple device and use it inside um, the simulation if this was the question. Kind of, uh, partially. My actual question is, if you have, uh, say, you, I assume this is a talk to be used in, uh, to, to study other algorithms, other services, other application on top of this, uh, this model. This is kind of the real, the actual purpose uh, of this. Assuming that you have, uh, say, a, a video streaming application or some kind of machine learning, uh, federated learning stuff running on the real device, are you thinking about, or you already did this, about sending the real data from the real service uh, from uh, the real device uh, into the simulation, or are, you are just feeding it with the position? Ah, okay. Um, no, um, at the moment we are basically just caring about the position and the mobility data. Um, of course, um, you, ex you could extend it um, with such a functionality, but as far as I know, there's at the moment no plan of doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, great that you mentioned um, CMO 5G. Um, we are actually um, working on integrating CMO 5G into the Grounded framework. So um, yeah, hopefully um, this improves our performance. Yeah, if, if I can chip in on this. Um, yeah, um, my, my question was actually, if, if you are thinking about extending this framework towards CMO 5G because as Antonio was saying, uh, we did a, a lot of improvement. Among these improvements, we have the fact that uh, you can uh, put in, into these scenarios, um, those we, we are calling uh, background cells and background UEs. That means that th they are lightweight models for UEs and, and base stations that we are using to produce interference and some traffic or some background traffic <laughs> with that. That uh, uh, kind of modeling, we saw that we are able to, to simulate up to um, hundreds of users and tens of cells. I think it, 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 it's quite a, a good result because as, as you uh, showed earlier, and, and as you know, uh, we knew that the, the limit of, of, of our model was that it was quite heavy and we, we weren't able to simulate a, a, a large number of UEs. So maybe uh, going to CMO 5G it, it might be helping in, in this way, yeah. yeah that sounds great. Um, yeah, hopefully we are able to um, integrate CMO 5G soon and um, then we could simulate a larger number of nodes. Uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, I would like to go on the, the performance issue. I, I think you, you'd like to explore, to explore the performance aspects. I think it's important for you, right? So my question would be, like, have you tried to run the simulation without the emulation parts or without a node zero or, or digital twin? <laughs> because that would, that would take like the, the emulation part out, out of the picture. So we would see how, how good the, just a pure simulation would perform. So like if you have pure simulation and you can, you can do with n equals 100 just fine near real time, then we can, we can see that the, the performance bottleneck is with the emulation. But if the simulation itself is, is, uh, provides similar performance, then the emulation overhead is not, not so much. So do you have some data on this? Uh, thanks for the question. Um... I don't actually have any data on it. Um, I didn't do any measurements, um, but um, I run the simulation multiple times um, without emulation. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So um, just from observing, there was not a very big difference. So um, I don't think it's the main performance bottleneck. Um, actually, um, I think really our two main performance bottlenecks are um, the, uh, I, I don't say LTE anymore because I heard that <laughs> Wi-Fi isn't uh, much better. So um, I think our main uh, performance bottleneck is the um, communication simulation between our nodes yeah. on the one hand. And um, all, I also know that the um, Vardara simulator um, is also not very fast with, uh, with a large number of nodes. Mm. And um, that's where multiple cores um, could actually hopefully help because um, maybe Stefan can correct me, but Vardara is multi-threaded, isn't it? Yeah. Regarding the Wi-Fi simulation, I think um, there, are, there are multiple factors here. So that it's, you cannot make a, like a, a, a blanket statement that it's slow or it's fast because for, for the Wi-Fi, you can, you can choose different representation of the, of, the, of the frames. So you can either do like a, a byte count representation, which means the frame only, only contains as much data as this is a 1,000 1, byte frame. And it's obviously quite cheap. But you can go, you can go down and, and simulate all, all the all the physical layers. So like like uh, go down to symbol level and transmit each symbol, and then compute the signal noise ratio for each symbol individually. And then on the other side, you can reconstruct the frame from it. So like uh, like decode and perform the error correction and unscramble and then stuff stuff, stuff like that. And it will and if if you do this de this detailed level of simulation, it will be like orders of magnitude slower, of course. And there is also uh, the detail level of the physical layer model, like how you model signal propagation interference, how detailed you go. But it, you can choose a single two-ray propagation model. It's obviously quite fast. But if you do something very complicated, like ray tracing based um, stuff, it, it's going to be very, very slow. So it's, um, yeah, so this, this is this, this issue. And then, of course, there's the other thing that uh, if you increase the number of nodes, then uh, because this is a wireless network, uh, the performance will um, will decrease just because uh, every frame, every transmitted frame is received by all the other frames. So there is naturally an n square uh, or the n square um, uh, performance factor here. Um, Yes, and uh, what what you said that um, maybe processing uh, uh, wireless signal propagation um, multicore would be useful. Yeah, I think it would be useful. And uh, in the past, we have done some experiments uh, um, using multiple cores like CUDA interface for for processing the reception at uh, multiple receiver nodes at the same time concurrently but uh, um, um, so there were some promising results but we we never got to to getting it to a really finished finished state so this is this has remained so far at the level of an interesting experiment so if someone is interested in this topic, I think Levanta can share this knowledge that he that we, we gleaned, gleaned from this doing, doing this experiment. Yeah. Thanks for the information. Um, seems like there is a lot of um, good work going on that's helping us here. And um, uh, the part with um, the different um, uh, Wi-Fi simulation modes, um, that's uh, pretty interesting. I definitely will have a look at that. Um, uh, until now, I didn't focus too much um, on the um, communication itself. Um, I personally focused more on the side of the emulation, but yeah, we'll definitely have a look at that. Thank you. Maybe one, one question regarding um, the, the lightweight models in uh, CIMO, CIMO 5G. Um, this would probably help us, I think so. Um, but are these nodes also able to run the real applications on top of this lightweight? OK, OK, that's, no, that's great. No. Yeah. The, uh, no, okay. I mean, I, I said yes, because it was the correct um, question. 
the, the, these nodes cannot run real applications. The, they can run uh, uh, real model of the application, meaning that uh, you, can, uh, you can say that one user will send um, this traffic with this period uh, you can put uh, s some model to 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 um, to represent the traffic that that has been sent from from the user. So you can put VoIP, uh, also IP, video streaming, whatever you want. Uh, that is not the real applications. There are not um, real packets flowing between the application and the other layers of, of this stack. Just helping to, I mean, uh, when you are running. Um, an LT simulations or a 5G simulation, you need to uh, fill uh, your, your, your cell to load your cell. Mm -hmm. How can you do that? You need to add users. You cannot do that when you are running an emulation. So we needed to find something else to, to, to fill the frame. So basically the idea is to you use them to generate the background traffic and then yeah. you, okay. Yeah. Exactly. But still this would also be a very helpful for us, I think is, yeah. And besides that we, we did uh, a few improvements, um, like optimization of the code that anyway will uh, increase a, a little bit the, the, the performance of the simulation. Uh, just thinking uh, out loud right, right now, uh, would it be possible or it would be interesting for you to feed uh, nodes uh, with just uh, the position of the actual uh, users. Let me uh, explain this a little bit better. Having uh, not really fully fledged node zeros, just to, to use the same term, but uh, uh, nodes whose position uh, is taken uh, in real time from real uh, uh, objects. So you are just taking the position over time and using it to feed the, the mobility model of, uh, uh, of those nodes in the simulation. Would be that interesting or is that out of your, your scope? Um, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, we actually are able to do this. Um, that's exactly what this um, inbound emulation module is for. Okay. And um, it receives, um, the position of um, one real device in real time, and then feeds this position um, to the emulation node. Here I use the term node zero, um, but um, you could have um, multiple nodes um, which have this um, inbound emulation module um, built in. So yeah, you, uh, you could imagine that you have maybe uh, three real devices that are moving around and you would see um, three nodes um, corresponding in real time in the simulation. So, um, but I have to say, um, we have this feature built in, but um, we didn't use it much yet. But um, I think um, this or this does actually work. Yes. Okay. Just just to, to understand this a little bit better, when you say you are feeding that node with the position, uh, where you are putting that value, you just to put it straight. You are telling that to the application layer that you are showing you here or to the mobility, high net mobility element within the, 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 the simulated the node? Um, yeah, we're doing, um, we're doing both, uh, both of it. Um, the inbound emulation module um, sits inside the application layer. There you can um, receive those um, mobility information. And we are also feeding it to the um, actually um, INET mobility layer. Okay, now I, I will uh, unveil while I'm asking this because Giovanni, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the background mode, uh, some, some one way we develop the background nodes that Giovanni was discussing before, uh, they can uh, still have the mobility module. Yeah. So you might have uh, a background node which uh, is just uh, generating interference, so no real traffic, but can have a real position. So you can have something in between. Uh, uh, yes, as far as understood, yes. Okay, this was just to answer the, I believe, last question before, okay. 
and anyway, uh, this is a, a work in progress. So uh, you know, as you are develop, you are too doing this too. You are developing models for doing something at the algorithm level, the system level, uh, whatever level. So uh, we can uh, slightly uh, modify the way we model these uh, to fit a uh, uh, different way of uh, of modeling these. Uh, bridge between real uh, life and emulated life, uh, simulated life. Um, yeah, um, at the moment, um, as you said, it's, um, it's also still in development, um, uh, especially this uh, inbound emulation um, module um, is, um, yeah, a bit how you're doing. <laughs> um, we have a, um, we have inside the mobility, um, we have a, a variable that indicates um, whether the mobility um, should come from the um, coupled application or from Vardere, um, which means we have kind of a switch, um, use the simulated position, use the real position. Yeah, that's um, actually how we are doing it. Um, and, but there are um, a lot of things that we plan to change um, and the real, uh, the first real release will be um, when we hopefully in a few weeks um, can merge um, our emulation branch into the um, main branch of um, Crowned. Thanks a lot. Very, 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 very interesting. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. So thank you everyone. So if, uh, are there any more questions? Okay, I think then we can, we can close the session. And if someone, someone has more questions, then I think they, they can find you later on, either on Discord channel or, or in other sessions, because there is also like private messaging. So, yeah, so, so they, can, they can find you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So. Thank you for everybody for joining in and for the interesting discussion. And yeah, I will be around um, today um, in the Discord and in later meetings, and you can always write me an email. So yeah, thank you. Feel free. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.